Hello again, everybody. Uh, we are back for another episode of the Redbird Roundup with uh, Jim Bunsen and uh, Joe Deacon. We're trying to make sure our faces are fully in frame this week. So, uh, Jim, how's it going? Not too bad, Joe. Good. Well, we've got uh, one game left on the regular season. Uh, ISU goes to Northern Iowa tomorrow to try and close out the regular season and uh, finish up uh, possibly a number one seed in the Missouri Valley. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a tough finale. Uh, ISU has never won at the McLeod Center. Uh, the building opened in 2007. ISU's last win against UNI was at the Uni Dome in, in 2006. So they've checked, crossed off and a lot of check marks this year, not winning diff- different places and all that. This is the kind of the final hurdle. This is a, indeed the final hurdle. And one thing they need to do, they, they've had a couple of nail biters their last few games. Yeah. I mean, they, they barely squeaked by Loyola and then uh, had a tight game with Southern Illinois, too. Yeah, they played a little tight. Um, I think they know what's at stake a little bit. Uh, offensively, they're. Rhythm and cohesion has not been very good. It's been kind of coming on a little bit since really McIntosh's uh, knee injury in late January. They just haven't had a great offensive explosion. But, you know, luckily their defense has kind of carried them to the victory, and they've actually had to make some big plays down the stretch of those last two home games off- offensively, which, you know, is kind of, in a way, it's kind of good. You know, you, you're probably going to need to do that somewhere here in uh, March. And, um, you know, they can kind of draw about, uh, upon that if they need to uh, when they get to St. Louis. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about um, McIntosh. I was, it seemed like he kind of tweaked his knee a little bit as that buzzer beater just rimmed out for Loyola on Sunday, and then he, he came up with no points. He, right. he did play put, in, in, some key minutes against yeah. Southern, but didn't score. Yeah, he played 23 minutes. Um, he had hardly practiced really the two days before that. Um, when he had come back the week before against Missouri State and um, – God, I can't remember who it was. Loyola, I guess mm-hmm. – um, he had practiced uh, a, a little bit before those games. Uh, the other day, he didn't practice a lot. and You know, it's Alan Iverson might, might not have liked to practice, but everybody else kind of needs it. And you need that on the court. And I think that was kind of missing cohesion a little bit. They, and I talked to Dan Muller this morning, or this afternoon, and he said they, they just passed up shots that they need to take. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether there's 15 seconds on the shot clock. If it's a good shot, take it. And, and they passed up quite a few of those shots the other day. Um, sometimes when you go on the road, though, you know, your mind's a little bit freer, I mm-hmm. think. I mean, it's a it's an us-against-them kind of mentality and all that. And, and they played very well on the road except really for one game in the last two months. So um, that might help them actually going on the road Saturday, especially, you know, knowing what's at stake. Um, they, they are not going to know the score of the Wichita State game uh, before they tip off. The game will probably still be going on. And uh, Dan Muller's not going to tell them, and he doesn't really want them to know, you know, well, because it's more care. of a focus on yourself. Yeah, take care of your own business. That's indeed, right. And indeed. then, uh, you know, you find out afterwards, did we share it or did we uh, win it outright? Exactly. Well, uh, look at a little bit at uh, Northern Iowa. It's kind of an odd team. They've obviously always very dangerous, but they've kind of underachieved this year, kind of a little bit of a one-man show. Well, what, what really is about Northern Iowa, people don't realize, they're guards. I mean, they have a, a senior transfer, a graduate transfer, Jordan Ashton. Didn't play a heck of a lot at Iowa State. Not very experienced. And then they're playing freshman point guard, Jawan McLeod, and he has struggled big time shooting. I mean, that's the big difference. In good teams, you know, guard play is really the, the when you get down to the nitty gritty about good teams, the guard play, if you don't have good guard play, you're not going to have a good season. And they have had, you know, spotty guard play for the most part. Wyatt Lowhouse is a returning veteran they had. He turned his ankle, and he, is, he has not played really during the Valley season. He's probably not going to play the rest of the season. So I think that's the big difference in, in Northern Iowa this year. They had some really good guards the last couple of years. I mean, really experienced guys have been through the wars, kind of like Tony Wills and uh, Paris Lee. And uh, that's just kind of the thing about them this year. Uh, they, they've had a tough season, but they're still, especially at home, they're very dangerous. They are kind of, though, they will go as Morgan goes, I think. I oh, yeah, Jer- well, Jeremy Morgan, and uh, I, I told you before, he's the uh, like the only player in the country who's leading his team in points, rebounds, assists, block shots, free throw. I mean, he leads his team in seven or eight categories. The only player in the country to lead his team in those categories. I mean, that is amazing. This guy, I mean, he's he's done yeoman's work, really. So looking ahead a little bit, I know it's kind of projecting some where teams would fall in some of the first round games. But who who would ISU likely face is either the one or the two seed coming out of the Oh yeah, well yeah, it is. I mean, it's all up for grabs tomorrow. Probably the bottom four teams for sure are going to be Bradley, Evansville, Indiana State, and Drake. Um, so it kind of depending if ISU is the one seed or the two seed, kind of. And it, it, the, I mean, they could play any of those four teams mm-hmm. really. So it's kind of hard to tell right now who would they not want to play. I think that, you know, who's dangerous, I guess, in that group. Mm-hmm. I think, without a doubt, the most dangerous team out of that group is Indiana State. You talk about underachieving. That team has underachieved it. They have some guys who can fill it up, and, 
you know, all it takes is a, one team to get hot in a tournament game, NCAA or a conference tournament game, and, and you're done. And Indiana State has those guys. Uh, Brenton Scott is a guy that, I mean, he might fire up 20 shots a game down in St. Louis. I mean, he's just that kind of, he's kind of an assassin type of thing. You know, he he, he forgets the, the, the shot he misses, and that's how you have to kind of be in tournament play. So I think Indiana State's a dangerous team. I think that's one team Illinois, does, Illinois State does not want to see on Friday in St. Louis. Aside from just what that first round, let's uh, take a look at a couple of the questions we got on Twitter, which are along the same lines, basically. Right. Uh, we've got one from Michael and one from Robert, and they basically want to know, uh, aside from Wichita State, who would be the greatest threat to Illinois State in Arch Madness? I think the greatest threat to Illinois State or Wichita State, is, I still think Missouri State is the greatest threat to either one of those teams. Uh, they have some size inside with Johnson and uh, Obadiah Church. Uh, they don't have the depth that Illinois State and Wichita State have inside. You know, Wichita State can throw about six guys at you inside. Illinois State can throw four or five when Mikhail's healthy. So, so uh, they don't have quite that depth inside, but, man, those, those guys are dangerous, and they have a veteran guard in Daquan Miller. They have a couple dangerous wing players, uh, Rhodes and uh, uh, Chris Kendrick. They have so underachieved this year. Like they're 7-10. and 10. They're probably going to be 7-11. They'll yeah, probably lose very, to Wichita. Very Jekyll and Hyde. They oh, lost gosh. to Bradley. Yeah, they've lost, yeah, they've lost a lot of close games. They just lost their confidence, I think. More than anything, they lost their confidence. Uh, confidence is a great thing in sports, and when you lose it, it's sometimes very hard to get back. But, you know, all it takes is one great game for a team to get their confidence back. I, I think Missouri State could be a dangerous team in St. Louis. And they could be playing on Thursday. Yeah, I, you know, and if, if I just chip in my own two cents there, obviously I'm a little biased since it's one game I attended in person, but Loyola well, looked pretty scary too. I mean, especially when you're coming down to one shot there to win, and Milton Doyle is quite a player. Yeah, Milton Doyle's had a, a great year, kind of almost like Jeremy Morgan in a way, just has to do everything for his team. Uh, they're a dangerous team, Loyola. They don't have the, quite the size and size inside as Missouri State, but they can shoot the heck out of the ball. They're shooting about 49% from the field. Uh, they're a dangerous team. Oh, they're, there's no doubt they're a dangerous team. The one thing about them is they don't have a lot of depth. And when you get into, you know, uh, even the second day, you know, you're playing two days in a row, and depth becomes a factor, I, I think. And uh, that's why I would think Loyola can be really hurt. The second half, if they get to Saturday, the second half of that game, they've got guys who have played, you know, really 40 minutes and then, you know, 60 minutes, you know, in a game and a half, because Doyle's not coming off the court in St. Louis, you no, know. That's for sure. So, so that's kind of where they're hurt a little bit. But they, they, they could be dangerous. I mean, they almost knocked off Wichita State last year in a quarterfinal game down in St. Louis. So they're, they're definitely dangerous, too. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Uh, we'll kind of have to play it by ear as far as next week when we might be able to come online ahead of the Valley Tournament, but we will know for sure whether the Redbirds are the number one or number two seed in St. Louis. And uh, if uh, you want to send us some more questions on Twitter, always send them to Jim at PG underscore Benson. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks.